Going through the home free hill obstacle. Oh man. I am out of clearance. <laughs> All right, James, well, that turned out to be a little bit more of an uh, adventure than we had anticipated. <laughs> but I hope you guys can see the sheer difference between stock versus modified because you made it through that last event and this thing was hopelessly stuck. A huge thank you to James. He's gonna be taking over this series and really, uh, really doing some cool stuff with his foreigners. So you wanna stay tuned. And uh, James, thanks for doing this, buddy. Yeah, no problem. It was a great time. I enjoyed it. Morning guys, uh, welcome back to our 4Runner Pro Runner series. Uh, today we're uh, modifying the 4Runner. So a couple of, couple of uh, steel modifications, bumpers, all of that stuff. We're here in Sturgis, South Dakota, which not known for, uh, not known for Toyota stuff, more known for bikes. But I uh, want to introduce Wes from C4 Fab. How's it going guys? Yeah, Wes, tell us a little bit about you guys. Yeah, so C4 Fabrication, we've been around for seven or eight years now. Um, company was actually started local to the Black Hills by our owner, Caleb Rupp. Um, and C4 actually stands for Caleb, and then 4x4 was how it started. So Caleb started out doing one-off custom armor for mini trucks and rock crawlers and really anything that would come in the shop. I've seen a couple Chevy C4 bumpers out there. Um, and he started out you know, with cardboard and really custom building these bumpers on trucks. And it has grown substantially from there on out. So that's why I guess the heart of the Black Hills, and that's what C4 itself stands for. Everything's manufactured in house, so um, we have some really awesome guys behind the, the welders that do all the hard work and make everything look so beautiful. Here's Caleb. Caleb's actually our head welder, so. Quality-wise, he's checking to make sure things look good before it goes to the shipping department. The TFL team was asking me, what are all these scooters for? This one's mine right here. Um, the shop's pretty big, so you can imagine all these guys having to walk to go to the bathroom or to just to get places. A long time ago, a couple guys brought scooters to the shop and that just got adapted by everybody and now we have official scooter stands and zones to house them. So. It's pretty fun and gets around way faster than feet, so that's the story behind that. So Wes, um, got everything laid out here really cool for what's going to go on the 4Runner. Um, could you walk us through what all the parts are and you know roughly how much everything weighs? Yeah, absolutely. So super excited to get this thing going. I've been talking back and forth with Grant for several months now, and here's all the parts and pieces we're going to be throwing on this 4Runner. Over here, we have a lot of random brackets that are included with our rear bumper. Um, so a lot of this stuff you won't actually see once it's on the truck. We do have our step plates down there for the sliders. So it'll provide a nice flat surface for Grant to get up to his roof and access the cab with. And then getting into the middle blanket, we have our full skids. So front engine skid, it has access holes for filters trans and TK skids and then over there we actually have a rear cross member to just brace the rear a little bit more and give it some more strength. Continuing down the line we have our sliders. So these are actually an angled slider and then once we bolt those plates on the top that's where you'll get that flat surface. So that's something we do that's kind of a little more unique to C4. Got the rear bumper right here. Grant opted for no swings so it'll just be essentially a direct replacement for the factory takeoff bumper. 
And then in the front, this is probably our best selling product out of our entire 4Runner lineup. That's our Low Pro winch bumper. So it's winch compatible, um, pretty lightweight, especially when you take off some of the factory components on the vehicle. And it'll hold 30 inch light bar, the winch, and kind of retain some of that OEM design and look. Mm. So. And total weight on everything, roughly. Look at yeah. a lot of metal. So the Low Pro is about 75. Um, probably around 50 pounds of a net weight gain once you take off some of the OEM components. Mm -hmm. The rear bumper, 160, um, around like 130 net weight gain. Um, sliders, 130 for the, these are DOM tubing, so obviously you want your sliders to be pretty beefy. Mm -hmm. um, the full skids, when you're looking at all four pieces, are around 130 pounds. Um, so that pretty much breaks everything down. It, yeah. It's pretty hefty, it's really strong stuff. It's not as heavy as you would think. Once guys start doing like dual swings on the rear and a 35 and tons of accessories, you'll want to look at like spring rates and stuff in the rear. But for what we're, put, we're going to put on the truck, I think it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, mostly in the front too. So we'll focus on front suspension. And exactly. Get this back off the ground. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Absolutely. So a few hours in, uh, we're done with the rear bumper install. So we wanted to run through real quick, kind of what the gotcha is the thing to look out for while you're doing that. Yeah, so our bumpers have a ton of adjustability. Um, there's some brackets you'll loosely install to the bumper itself before you slide it onto the frame. You just want to make sure all the hardware is in place before you actually lift it up. You can kind of rest it on the cross member and just take your time. We have really detailed video install instructions that go through every bolt and every bolt location. Um, as well as a PDF that goes over the torque values. But because there is so much adjustability, you can fine tune your gaps on each side and the reveal of the bumper itself, the position left to right. Um, so we do leave, you know, quarter to a half inch gap between the cab corner and the bumper. Because of this capped edge, um, it does give a nice even reveal on both sides, but you want a, a minimal gap there because you are gonna get some frame flex and body flex. And the last thing you want is your bumper slamming into your quarter panel on the rear and and destroying it. So knowing guys are building their trucks out purpose built with our stuff, we take that stuff into consideration. Yep. Um, the bumper does give you some locations for flush mount lights that you can add right away or after the fact. It's not super hard to access once the bumper's on. Other things to note, um, we do reuse the factory holes in the cross member for our own hitch. So you can still tow with this, it's super beefy. Factory hardware goes into four hole locations and two from the bottom. So for guys wanting to run bike racks or whatever, this isn't just a cheap receiver. You know, you can load this just like you would your factory one. Um, just kind of be kind of mindful of the toe, or the, excuse me, the tongue weight, just like every, every other bumper. Um, what else to go over? Um, your trailer wiring is high and tight under here now. So we get that up and out of the way because that hangs down pretty low on the factory bumper. So you won't catch that on anything. Um, you can also remove the hitch completely. So if you're not gonna tow and you don't want that dragging on the ground, that is one of the lower points of clearance on the bumper. You can remove this cover plate, pull those bolts out, drop the hitch, throw the cover plate back on, um, and you'll gain a couple inches of clearance. Um, and then you'll notice the bumper's got recovery points welded right in, um, braced front and rear. So a couple solid recovery points for when you're out wheeling if you get into a bind. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Great. You want to walk around to the front and show yeah. the status on the front? Let's do it. These guys are working away on um, getting this winch fitted. So Grant chose a Xeon winch, which fits just fine into our bumpers, but the Xeons do have a little bit bigger control pack. So the Evo, they're a little smaller, a little easier to fit. What we did here is there's some hard power steering lines that typically run right above this lower brace of the grill. We installed our power steering cooler relocation kit, which is just an additional cooler that sits here, and then replaced those hard lines with some flexible hose, reconnected it. So get some additional cooling, gave us the space we needed to keep his control box right on top of the winch. And then the winch is clocked, so on that other side, when you reach your hand in, you can access the free spool lever. Everything will be super easy to get to. So if he's out and actually needs to recover himself or somebody else, he's not fumbling around trying to 
take his grill apart and reach down in there. Um, that's the goal is to make everything as easily accessible as possible. And with this style of bumper here, there's nothing you have to relocate in the engine bay, the washer bottle, any of that stuff. Nope. Um, so this will just replace the center section um, of the factory OEM bumper. We do have the option with these low pro bumpers, you can attach high clearance additions, which are steel and they will give you a little bit more tire clearance right in front of the tires. If you do do that, your um, washer tank will hang down a little bit, but we have a bolt on cover for those. So it's essentially a skid that reuses factory hardware. You slide it right over to protect it from rocks or you know, the random obstacle you might come in contact with. But you can add those at any time, which is nice. Just a backing plate. You, you can order those pieces by themselves. So once Grant decides to throw those 35s on, we've been chatting with him about, <laughs> get those high clearance sides and he'll be set. This series wouldn't be possible without the support of our friends at Rider Justice, a law firm that specializes in helping motorcycle riders across the country. They're passionate overlanders as well. And as with their motorcycle brothers and sisters, they want to make sure that overlanders out there like you protect their pricey one-of-a-kind rigs from theft and damage. Start with a simple audit of your insurance coverage. Did you know that anything attached to your overlanding vehicle is covered by your auto insurance? But anything you put in your vehicle is covered by your homeowner's insurance. Don't know which is which? That's where Rider Justice can help. Go to riderjustice.com slash overlanding to find more tips and smart advice on hitting the road with more peace of mind. Day two of the 400 Pro Winter build. Uh, the winch bumper and winch are in. Winch is all wired up. Time for the uh, stock bumper to go back on. So Wes, walk us through a couple of the steps here. Yeah, so the low pro bumper, you just cut out the center section of the OEM plastic. And then you can actually bolt the bumper up to the frame without the rest of the plastic in place. Make sure your winch is situated. We got all that wired up and then we'll just take the plastic cover. It'll slide right on over the top and we'll flip it down. So C4 has a few different front bumper options for the 2014 and up 4Runners. This is our low profile winch bumper. A lot of guys that select this want the capability of running a winch, the capability of running a light bar, having some beefed up recovery points, but don't necessarily want a full bumper with the added weight and to have to cut all the way across the front. So this retains a little bit more of an OEM look and still gives you some of the capability that you'd get from running a full bumper. Essential for any off-roading project, any off-roading vehicle, is the ability to put a lot of stuff on the roof. And to help us out with that today is Alex from Sherpa. Alex, welcome. Thank you, thanks hey. for having us. Um, tell us a little bit about Sherpa. Where are you guys, how big is the company, how are you guys doing? Yeah, we're in Berthoud, Colorado, uh, USA made roof racks. Uh, we have 14 employees right now and growing. So we've been doing this for about six years and helping people get their trucks outfitted. Awesome, yeah. and I have one of your racks on my truck. I'm super happy with it, our friend Hugo hooked you know, hooked me mm -hmm. up with it and yeah, I just love it for holding my awning. So, yeah. so tell us about what we're putting on the truck today. Yeah, so this is a all aluminum roof rack system. So it's lightweight, it's really modular. Um, it has a lot of opportunity for setting it up how you need your gear on your truck. Uh, we use premium materials, high quality aluminum, really high quality hardware. So you're not gonna have to worry about it while you're out on the trail. Um, our whole idea with our company is basically setting you up with a rack that you don't have to worry about or you don't have to worry about your gear attached to it. So basically set it up and forget about it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let's get to installing. Heck yeah. All right. So I'm putting on our uh, roof seals right now. And a lot of rack companies require silicone on their racks, but we use these rubber blocks that are more similar to the OEM style seals. So not only does this isolate your rack from the roof, but it gives you a watertight seal without having to put any messy sealants or anything on your roof. So Alex, uh, we're about 45 minutes on the install here. Yep. Uh, it's all done. Mm -hmm. um, so what I, was, what I was hoping you could do is run us through kind of like the adjustability, yeah. like the accessories, stuff like that, now that it's on the truck. Yeah, absolutely. So. 
This rack, one thing that we really tried to put into this rack is a lot of options as far as mounting things. So with that, we put a ton of adjustability. All of our crossbars um, have quarter inch slots all the way around it for mounting accessories into. Where the crossbars bolt in is all adjustable so you can choose your crossbar placement depending on what accessories or tents uh, you're mounting up here. So pretty much um, anything can get mounted up here as long as you have uh, the right uh, equipment or accessories to do so. Um, it's all aluminum, super modular, uh, quarter inch thick, 60-61 side plates, so it's very rigid um, and built strong for the truck. And then the types of accessories you can mount to it? Yeah, so uh, awning mounts, traction board mounts, high lift mounts, um, rotopax mounts, uh, we have tent risers, um, to set up tents depending on how they are designed so that they fit best and they're nice and quiet on the rack. If you just put them on here and sandwich the crossbars, you can get rattling. So we like to make everything as seamless and as nice as possible for okay. the end user. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah. All right, time to do the skid plates. Install is done. Uh, skids and sliders are on. So uh, Wes, if you could walk us through just what are some cool features of uh, you know, the skids now that we got them on the truck? Yes, these are our full skid plates. So that includes a front skid, engine skid, um, T-case transmission, and then there's kind of a rear cross member skid that braces frame to frame in the very back just to add some structural support. The skid plates have access holes cut in them for filters and drain plugs. So it's really easy from a service standpoint to not have to remove your skids completely to change your oil or do whatever you need to do under the car. You'll see drain holes along the skids, so if you get stuck in mud or whatever you might be, you're not getting sucked into the ground. So everything's pretty well thought out. Um, flanges coming up and protecting, you know, exhaust and different components that hang a little bit lower under the, the truck, and they're all steel, so hopefully this is the cleanest they're ever going to be, and they'll, they'll be able to take a beating and keep going. So. <laughs> So steel, kit, steel skids, powder coated, um, once they take a little bit of damage, what's the upkeep process on them? Yeah, so most of our customers, myself included, will just sand down any rough edges of powder coat that may be flaking, black spray paint, any touch up black paint really. Mm -hmm. Just if there's exposed steel, covering that up before it starts to corrode. Um, these are very thick steel, so you're not gonna rust a hole through them by any means. Some guys don't care and they'll just let them get super rusty and then they'll pull them off every couple years and re-powder coat them. So it's just kind of personal preference, but if you do want to keep them looking nice, sanding those edges down, hitting them with some touch-up paint, that's an easy way to do it. So from the main tube of the slider to the outer tube, the sliders are actually at a 25 degree angle. Not a very comfortable surface to stand on. It's great for additional clearance, but what C4 does is they give you these bolt-on step plates if you opt for them that have dimple dies for more of a rough surface you're not slipping around and that gives you your flat surface to step in and out of the cab or get onto your roof with so it's a cool feature that we offer thanks for having us it's great to meet you guys you as well. thanks again for the help with the truck man. for sure looks awesome all right so for our next installment we're back to denver for lift wheels and tires and then we're going to take it wheeling So we're starting on the next part of our 4Runner to Pro Runner series. We're back in Denver, we're at Running for Tacos. And uh, today we're doing lift, tires, and suspension. my buddy Hugo. How you doing, James? Hugo. Good hey, to buddy. see you. Good to see you, man. Good to yeah. see you. So <clears throat> walk us through a little bit. First off, running for tacos. Yes. Um, how big are you guys? How many employees? Like the shop, you know, got a full shop here. Yeah. How are you guys doing? So we're about a, a small company, family owned and operated in the heart of Denver, Colorado, about seven minutes away from downtown Denver. Uh, we are about 12 employees. Uh, yeah, and this is our passion, Toyotas, off-roading, overlanding. 
Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the suspension work we're doing today. Yes. Um, so I see Fox and BDS. Correct. So we went with a Fox suspension system, two and a half inch diameter shock bodies, uh, valve and tune a little bit more on the linear side, approximately 250 PSI internally. Uh, we upgraded the spring rate to 650 pounds because this vehicle is equipped with a bumper and a winch, also steel skid plates. So we wanted to reinforce the, that suspension, especially the front end to minimize that body roll a nose dive every time you hit the trails or if you are daily driving, it's a little bit more stable at higher speeds. And we pair them with a BDS, a set of BDS upper control arms, which is also Fox pretty much. Uh, these upper control arms, uh, they have a caster built into them, uh, about two and a half to three and a half degrees of caster. Uh, they use a premium move ball joint, which the really good thing about these upper control arms is that you can find that ball joint at any auto parts store in case if something happens to it and also is regressible. So we usually recommend to grease this ball joint every oil change with uh, some PTFE lubrication, which is petroleum free. So it doesn't corrode the Teflon inside of the ball joint. And or personally, if you are planning on taking your vehicle off-roading quite often, I will say every two, three off-roading trips, just add a, a couple pumps of uh, PTFE lubrication to extend the lifetime of that ball joint. So this is a full three inch suspension not Correct. the two and a half on my truck. No, it's right. a full three inch suspension. Yes, sir. Uh, and as far as tiering goes, mm -hmm. this suspension, not low end, not high end, kind of right in the middle. That is correct. This is not your uh, entry level suspension, but it's neither a super high end suspension. This is perfect mid, mid tier. So usually what I, we recommend, or I've been recommending through the, over the years, if you're planning on adding weight on your suspension, reinforce your shocks because the shocks are kind of like the legs of your body. If you start adding weight, if you have a two inch diameter shock body, uh, you are going to reduce the lifetime of that shock very, very fast. Compared to a two and a half inch diameter shock body, naturally you have more fluid, everything is reinforced. You can see the shock rod over there, it's slightly thicker, the bottom of the shock. The reason why is because, for example, if you hit a pothole, you're gonna hit it a few times harder than the guy that doesn't have any extra weight. So that's why it's always really good to reinforce your suspension. Also for the type of terrain that we do here in Colorado, it's mostly called crawling, slow speed, crawling, larger obstacles. So this is a perfect setup for most of the trails in Colorado. I wanna say probably all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Utah, New Mexico. Yeah, this is the mid-tier, not overkill, not entry level. This is the perfect setup. So let's talk wheels and tires next. Yes. Um, so I see what looks like a set of 33 inch KO2s. That is correct, 285, 70, 17, with uh, wheels that are eight and a half inches wide, uh, 4.75 inches of back spacing and zero offset. Uh, this is a perfect configuration. So you minimize some, a lot of the rubbing. Uh, you don't change the geometry of that wheel with a lot of offset. So your wheel bearing will be still almost center with the tire. So you don't put a lot of stress on your wheel bearings as well. So, so really good is, combo. This is an eight and a half inch width wheel. Correct. And the stock widths are it's, usually seven inches. Correct. Yeah, what's the benefit of that? So the benefit of having a wider wheel, so the, the way you measure tires, um, if you look at these numbers, this is 285. The best way I can explain it, it's 285 millimeters wide. Uh, your factory tires are only 265 millimeters wide. So we need to get a wider wheel so your beats on the tire are actually on the safer side. When you air down, you can air down down to 18, it's recommended, or 15, depending on the load range on the tire or how much weight you carry on the, on the vehicle. So the wider wheel allows us to go with a wider tire. So yeah, eight okay. and a half inches is the sweet spot. Okay, so total time on the install plus alignment? I wanna say usually takes about, for a setup like this with mountain balancing, full suspension, yeah. about seven hours, seven to eight hours, a whole day pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So Hugo, let's talk about the rear suspension while it's off the truck. So we're yeah. about midway through the install, front suspension is mostly done, but the rear suspension is still off the truck, so it'll give you a chance to kind of walk through. Sure. What are the specs on this? So the specs on these shocks, they're slightly longer. Well, they're a perf high performance shock, so they're a couple inches longer than your factory shock. Uh, once again, actually, uh, since they are out of the vehicle, you can see just the thickness of this uh, shaft over here, all the fluid. So we have remote reservoirs on these units. Uh, this means that this shock, it's completely full of, of fluid. 
Their remote reservoirs, they carry about 30% shock fluid and 70% nitrogen. They are not full of um, shock fluid. The reason why is because whenever the shock uh, gets a full stroke, all this fluid needs to go somewhere. So it travels through the hose, comes back to the remote reservoir. You have an internal floating piston right here dividing the uh, nitrogen with the fluid. This internal floating piston floats up, nitrogen cools it off, and the pressure, which is about 250 PSI, it pushes the fluid back to the shock, uh, preventing shock cavitation, especially at higher speeds or when the suspension is under a lot of stress. Uh, also on these units, you can see the adjusters. You have your high speed adjuster and low speed adjuster, which this is a fantastic setup to have. The reason why is because you'll be in full control of your ride quality and performance. Um, Let's say you're on a road trip with carrying 600 pounds of weight on the rear end. You can play with your high speed adjuster, make the rear end uh, dampening a little bit more on the firmer side, since you're ca carrying all the weight in the back. This low speed, it's uh, mostly for like technical trails. When you're crawling, it will firm up the valving in the shock. But this one is also for higher speed if you're planning on traveling on uh, washboards or sand dunes and stuff of that nature. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, rear springs, what we have over here, we have a heavy duty spring. I uh, didn't want to go with a super, super heavy duty spring. The reason why is because the bumper that we, uh, the, it, this vehicle uh, is using, it weighs about approximately 150 pounds or so. Mm -hmm. So this is an increase of payload capacity on the spring rate about 25%. So your factory spring rate on four runners is about uh, 180 pounds. Now we have approximately 200 pound spring rate. So this way the right quality won't be sacrificed mm -hmm. and also the customer or TFL will be able to carry a few more hundred pounds of camping gear, camera production gear and stuff of that nature without having the rear end sagging. And then lastly, the bump stops. So we're adding new bump stops. Correct, yeah. We, uh, TFL was working with Perry Parts. Uh, we are testing them. These are 3D printed. So we're going to give them a shot. They feel a little bit flexible. So yeah, we're going to test them and see how it goes. Awesome. Let's yeah. get back to it. So we're here on beautiful Switzerland Trail, uh, just a few miles west of Boulder, Colorado, up in the Rockies. This obstacle is about a seven out of 10. There's a breakover spot. We're probably gonna hit our sliders right there, but we'll see. 